Thanks, Megan. I'm sorry I missed you on your way out today. But I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. What's up, everybody? Will Borza here, the LA recordist. It's the analog vlog. It's a vlog. Analog. Now, this evening, I'm working on some mastering, which I'm really excited about. But first, I have to sit through eight hours of spreadsheets. So let's get that over with. All right, back home. Uh, that was quick and painless, and I'm completely lying. But before I get to mastering, I want to move the table maybe over there or something. And I'm going to widen out the speakers. Because as it is from where I'm sitting, which is roughly here, that's the position, you can see that the speakers are a little more narrow than they are close to me. And the, the best, most optimal speaker range is like 60 degrees, you know, 30 degrees that way and 30 degrees that way. And it's a little narrower than that. So I'm going to move table maybe over that way and widen out the speakers a bit. I like it. No, even better, did a little switcheroo, put them sideways. That makes it extra wide. Now it's really important whenever you do a switch like this to spend some time listening because you have essentially changed the shape of your stereo field and you need to familiarize yourself with what popular music sounds like, music that you've listened to a million times, what that sounds like on the new setup. Otherwise, you're not going to know how wide is too wide in your mixes. You want to see my mastering chain? Of course you do. Come here. Alright, this up here. This is the original unmastered file. First plug in. We have a Fab Filter Pro Q. I set it up in mid side mode. I knocked the sides out of the bass. I bumped up a little here. I got rid of some sibilance and weird tinny stuff. A little high boost on the sides. And that's that. Next thing Saturn. It's doing absolutely nothing in the low end, absolutely nothing on the high end. It's just beefing up the bass and adding a little bit of saturation down there. Next plugin, a de-esser. This guy is limiting everything above 7K, just by like two decibels. This guy, honestly, okay, so I have this top one working. It's doing about a decibel of peak compression, the bottom one same thing, a little bit of peak compression. This guy is just on. I like it because it adds some cool saturation in the mid-range. Lastly, one more EQ. It's in linear phase, not maximum, but high latency. Um, we have a low mid boost and a counteractive cut right above it. Getting rid of a little bit more tinniness. I found that was a problem on this one. Lowered the high end, especially the hi-hat. Um, and I did that because I'm referencing random access memories. Then it goes out of the computer into the Apogee where it first hits some tubes and then it hits the Neve. And the Neve is doing fancy things. I think I had it on blue silk. This is the depth knob and I'm bringing the whole mix forward and then I'm pushing out the sides in the upper mid register. Okay, then it goes back into the computer. Now here's the fancy thing that I did today. It sort of goes against everything you've ever been taught, but I broke the rules, okay? And I sent two versions of this master to the client 
and I'm not telling them which is which. I want them to use their ears and see if they can even hear a difference, and if they can, which version they like better. This top version, no, let me start here. This bottom version was recorded in at a very healthy level, and then I took my limiter, cranked up the gain, did a little bit of this, uh, you know, advanced setting stuff, added my dither, typical brick wall limiting at the end of the song. I think it's doing about two decibels of compression. But this one, this green one right here in the middle, this is where I got a little bit crazy. You see, I went into Apogee Maestro. And in Apogee Maestro, I have the option of switching line level inputs to variable level inputs. All right. And I turned up the gain just slightly, two decibels, if you want to be precise. And the two decibels that I shaved off the top in this digital version here, by just adding a bunch of gain, I actually used the converters in the Apogee down there to do a little bit of clipping. So these two tracks are the exact same volume. They're the exact same loudness. They have the exact same amount of reduction. It's just that this bottom one I reduced the peaks digitally, and this top one, I reduced the peaks at the point of entry back into Pro Tools. So if you look at this Pro L, you can see there's no gain added, and obviously the waveform on this top one is much larger than this one. So if you play these back to back, that is the same loudness as that. The difference is very subtle, but I can definitely, definitely hear a difference. And personally, I don't know if it's just because it's new or because it's a fancy technique that I just learned, but I think I really, really like the clip gained version. It's a technique that mastering engineers don't typically talk about, uh, mostly because it's just so taboo. You're never ever supposed to hit the red. You're never supposed to have the signal go above zero. But some of the loudest and most impactful mixes are mastered by taking the, the top two, three decibels, not much, just, you know, the peaks. And, and shooting them into the red. But of course, it has to go through a really nice converter like the Apogee or like, you know, maybe an antelope audio type high-end situation. If you try to do this on a lesser interface, it's just gonna sound bad. Something about expensive converters, something about mastering, I, I honestly don't know. This is the first time I've ever tried this. Um, but I like it, and I'm stoked that I got to try it. I'm stoked that I was able to like scrounge the web until I could find information on this. We'll see what the client thinks, and uh, yeah, this might end up being something that I do on the regular. And now the cat's out of the bag. Well, at least to like the 15 people that watch these vlogs. Anyway, it was a good day of mastering. I enjoyed mastering this. Now, I did mix this song as well, so it was nice that I finished the mix like a month ago so that it sort of left my brain and I was able to approach it with new, newish ears. Um, sometimes when you're trying to master something right after you finish the mix, it's a lot harder because your mix is, is like, well, this is exactly how I want it to sound because I mixed it. But you get that little extra space in between and you hear things that you forgot about and you hear things that could really use improvement. So, mastering after a bit of time is a good thing. Anyway, the songs are sent off to the client, so that's it for tonight. Tomorrow is a really special day, you know why? 
I, I stopped putting numbers at the beginning of these vlogs a while ago. Maybe I should get back into the habit of doing that. Tomorrow is 200 vlogs. 200. I've been doing this 200 days in a row, and I haven't missed a single episode yet. That's awesome. Really stoked. I don't think I don't have anything planned. Like, I don't really know anything special to do for 200, but, um, yeah, it's a milestone. I'm stoked about it. So, yeah, see you guys tomorrow. Peace.